You know, I do you think it sort of reminds me, it's sort of interesting. I go back to my friends in high school and in junior high school, and how I've watched us you now 50 years later, and I've sort of been amazed that we were friends at that point, and our parenting styles were remarkably similar, which always intrigued, intrigued me that uh, that we feel very much the same about children. I'm not sure why that is, but it, it, maybe what drew us together as friends also were factors that uh, influenced the way we parented, but it was, I, it was I, sort I of a that, curious factor. I think that's probably the answer, but there are generational styles in parenting. Yes. You know, I always feel that each generation invents parents and tries to compensate parenting and invent sort of compensates for what didn't happen in their generation, which then causes their children to compensate for what happened in there, too. Yes, it's uh, uh, sort of circular. It is. Um, it's sort of interesting. I guess there's a lot of anger involved in divorce. And how, how can divorcing parents learn to deal with anger creatively? Well, what I tell parents is always have in your head a picture of your children so that before you give vent to your anger, you're thinking, is this going to have an effect on my kids? We go a step further, we're mediating. We often tell the people to put pictures on the table while we're mediating. That's a very good idea, very good idea. And I think that also there are little tricks. For example, communicating by email sometimes is very useful, especially if you use the 24-hour delay. It doesn't come with, I don't know of any apps that do that for you. But you just tell yourself, okay, I'm going to write what I feel, and then I'm going to check it. You have it to put that on your website. When you have your people email through your website, it automatically puts a 24-hour hold on it. <laughs> that, that would be a good idea. But anyway, I think that uh, using email, making a real effort to not uh, give vent to your anger. And you know there's another slogan, and that is get over it. You're not married anymore. It's over. There's no point in replaying something that, um, you know, already know, didn't work. But there is a point in protecting your children from the anger that you have. Another tough, I got a few more tough questions. We're getting to the bottom of the list here. It's hard. How can parents make joint custody work? Well, you know how the real estate people say every, everything is location, location, location. The joint custody situations that I've seen that work, the parents have been close enough to each other to make it um, easier for the child, maybe the same school, things like that. And the other thing is communication, communication, communication. I think those things are what makes joint custody work. One couple that I know about, they left the child in the house and they switched. Burden missing. Yeah, they switched every um, three days or so. They figured that uh, they were better able to cope with different places. Um, twice a week than the child was. And they planned to do that until the child was 18. I th if you stop to think about it, if you had to move every three days, uh, pack your little suitcase, figure out what house you were going to be in, what clothes were there, what school supplies were there, it's a pain. And it's a pain for kids. I always had a case where people wanted to alternate days. That's uh, We, we discourage that. Yeah, that's the other problem that comes up in a lot of uh, divorces now is, we have a, and I find it particularly in Arizona, we have people coming off of the uh, base, um, is sort of long distance parenting. Um, but sometimes it can be coast to coast. You know, how, how, is there any suggestions or tips that you have on making long distance parenting work? That is one of the biggest problems because it makes. Children need both parents, and long-distance parenting means that it makes that very difficult. When you're in the same town, uh, it is possible for the child to see both parents. Usually they're living with a custodial parent, and the other parent is available and close enough to make it possible. However, when one lives in California and the other in Vermont, it makes it very difficult. Sometimes, uh, especially during summer vacations, you can see children of divorce on the plane because they have the right. tags of the unaccompanied minor and they're going cross-country to uh, see a parent. It's a tough life, and if it can possibly be avoided, I think it should be. You know, in, our, in our current society, there seems to be two issues that we're seeing. Now, one is, is that a lot of people aren't getting married. So are you seeing situations or handling situations now where you have people who have children but aren't married? I mean, does that make any difference? Um, 
We're giving you advice. Well, no, I don't think it's a good idea because the C for commitment to me means marriage. I think it's too easy to walk away when you're not married. And I don't think it's as safe a situation for the child as a marriage. But it's not. Once again, there's a lot of people doing that. And then they want to, I guess what we see now is meeting unmarried cases where the people have a house, have a child, and now they don't have the benefit of always going to court in some states. But they still have a lot of the parenting issues. But my sense is that we sort of treat them as if they were married. I think that's true. I think the same thing is true with, for example, gay couples. That was going to be my next question. And I think that there really is no difference. When it comes to a child with two parents that are going to split, it doesn't make any difference whether the parents were married, not married, gay, not gay. What the problem is is that the home that the child counted on is no longer going to exist. And I think that the gay issue sometimes creates a thing. A lot of cases I've handled where people present it where very often somebody's coming out. They're married. Heterosexual marriage, they're coming out. They want to get split up. And they think that's the issue. But my experience over case after case is that really it's not the issue. I think you're right. And I wasn't really referring to that. What I was referring to was a gay couple that has a child. I don't think there's any difference to that child. I don't think there is. I can't answer that either. I mean, I think the same issues come up. We sometimes think it's different because of those issues. But there really isn't at all. Absolutely. I agree. What about the situation that comes up a lot, it seems to me, is the couples are getting divorced and they want to start dating. How do we deal with the new person being brought into that situation? Well, there's some interesting data about that. We have the highest divorce rate and the highest marriage rate, remarriage rate, in the industrialized world. I always jokingly say that the divorced people who quickly get married again are either slow learners or optimists because that second marriage is very risky in most instances. I think that it is best for the child if dating is postponed and the child isn't involved in the dating situation. Some parents want to immediately have the person they've just met get involved with the kids. Also, the issue clearly is staying over the overnight. Definitely, definitely. And I really, if parents ask me, I advise them to not get the child involved. Don't even let the child meet the person you're dating unless you are pretty sure that this is going to be a permanent, permanent thing, which, as I just said, may not be. And can you think of putting a child through two divorces? It happens a lot. I can imagine. It's been fascinating to talk to you. One last question. Any final tips or suggestions that you have for parents? Yeah, put the kids first. We all have a sense of self-preservation. We want to take care of our own needs. But when you became a parent, you became a person that was responsible for another human being. Put that child first. Thank you very much for coming on the air with me. I want to thank you once again. Thank you for being on the show and being our program. It's been fascinating. I've learned a lot. I hope everybody else has also learned a lot. And also, once again, if you want to learn more about Dr. Hines, I'm going to show her website on the screen. And also, if you want more about our Divorce TV, we're on the website as well. And you can see us on YouTube. This has been Divorce TV with Wally Marcus. Thank you.